The projectile motion computer lab takes us to the University of Colorado website on the internet which contains a group of high school simulations. Once on the internet, the program is going to look like this. These are interactive simulations. Click on Run Now and it'll open up like this. Notice that you have a cannon, there's a tape measure that allows you to measure things in meters. It can be moved all over the page. You have a target that can be moved as well. The lab states that we would like to have a distance of 25 meters. Please place the cursor or the crosshair at the bottom of the cannon wheel. Pull on the other end of the tape measure. Sometimes you can get 25 meters exactly. Other times it's going to be pretty close. Let's see what we can get. Yep, this time it looks like it's 25.02 or 24.95. I know I can beat that. 24.99. I'm going to call that 25. Don't be too concerned about it. Please move your target. You may need to move the target above the X so that you can get a hit. Put the cross here in the middle there. We're going to select baseball. Once I've selected baseball, I can fire. I also notice that I can select ear resistance. I can either erase my parabolic path or leave it. I'm going to leave it just for a moment to show you what happens when we have ear resistance. The parabola doesn't give you as much height. The baseball does not go as high, nor does it have the same downrange distance. We're going to click off ear resistance. I just wanted to show you how that worked. We're going to erase. One more time, I'm going to fire. I see my angle is 80 degrees. My initial speed is 18 meters per second. That would be V naught. The mass of the baseball is 0.145. The diameter of the baseball in meters is 0.074. I can see that I haven't hit my target, so I have to alter my angle. Fire again. I can see that this time I don't have the vertical height, but I have more horizontal distance down range. I've overshot the target. You can keep playing with this until you hit the target. Score. Now I can tweak this a little bit more to see if I can get a little bit closer. Right on. That's a pretty good bullseye. Please note that we have the range up at the top, 24.9 meters. That would be your X component of the projectile. Height, negative 1.2 meters. That will be vertical. Time, Time in air or time in flight is 3.4 seconds. Please record all data in your data table. We're going to record angle, initial speed, time, actual range, and V sub HZ. That will be your actual range in meters divided by the time in seconds. Okay, the second half of the lab on the back side of the sheet asks you to switch to the pumpkin to see what the effect of mass is. I notice that the pumpkin has an initial speed of 18 meters per second, a mass of 5 kilograms, a di diameter of 0.37 meters. Let's fire again. Ooh, that was a lucky hit. Awesome! You can uh, put sound on this if you wish. I recommend that for your playing with this lab simulation at home. It would probably be a good idea to turn it off while we're back in the lab space and we have 15 computers going. Okay, when you're done filling in the data table for the pumpkin on this side, I'm sorry, let me try that again. 
For the baseball on this side and the pumpkin on that, please answer the questions and have them ready to turn in tomorrow, the day after the lab. Thank you very much. Have a great time with this. Enjoy it. two ways that you can change the angle of the cannon. One is to just grab the barrel of the cannon and move it. You can see that this is going to alter the vertical and horizontal range. The other thing that you can do is you can type in a number The mass of the baseball will not be changing, the diameter will not be changing. You're going to have to play with the initial speed if they give you the angle. If we give you the initial speed in the data table, you'll have to alter the angle instead. Please note that the one thing that we are still checking is up at the pot top, we have the range in meters the height in meters, and the time in seconds. Please make sure you record all facts, including your initial speed, in the data tables as asked for. Please note that as you scroll through the list and change from tank shell to golf ball to baseball, the program changes the mass of the object and gives you a different diameter. That's why we're going to use the pumpkin on the back for a little humor. We have a human that can be sent from the cannon as well. Let's take a look at that. the circus clown. When you're done you can play with some of the other settings. You can click on air resistance, see if that makes a difference. Play with different objects comparing their masses. But the entire time we want to record for our data the range that would be the X component, the height, that would be the Y component, and the time in flight, that would be your hang time. If you wish, you can use the other settings. We have the plus and minus. Those symbols will make the display closer or further away, depending upon how you've enlarged them. You may need those settings to see the height of your parabolic path. Have fun!